Hello, and welcome to your yoga pause. Today is a very special day because I woke up this morning and I go online um, after I do my morning activities. Then when I'm getting ready for my coffee, I watch videos. I watch comedies on YouTube. I watch comedy and I watch um, stand-up comedy. And I went to go watch it and I had two options for videos on my feed. And one of the options was an interview that I did with my now mentor, Gay Hendricks, and his co-host, Mike Koenigs, on the Big Leap podcast. And I'm going to put the link in the description so that you can see it. Most people come to these yoga series to learn these different poses to learn how to integrate their yoga practice with their menstrual phases but this is only a piece of the work that i do that is dedicated to shifting people to pain-free pms-free and consistent cycles or if you're more comfortable with this language the lessening of pain the lessening of PMS, and the rising inconsistency of your cycle. So if you are curious about really shifting beyond the physical intervention, but a holistic shift, then I recommend that you check out this interview. And if that piques your curiosity and you want to feed it even more, then check out the link to the Fierce Gentleness Collective because it's going to uh, definitely satiate that curiosity. So let's get started. Today I am on day two of my cycle and that puts me in priestess phase. For those of you who are not part of the Fierce Gentleness Collective, that means that I am in the menstrual phase right now. I am shedding the endometrium, I'm shedding the lining of the uterus, and there's a little bit of blood also helping to facilitate that exit. At the same time, my body is restoring itself within. So my appetite is pretty low. And of course, if I'm not feeding myself that much, I don't have as much fuel to burn, which means my body energy is also quite low. And the effect is very similar to just coasting through life in that very blissful, I'm okay kind of way. And of course, our yoga poses today are going to reflect that coasting. So let's begin in this kneeled pose. And oh, I have to introduce this outfit today because it's not sponsored. It's just a um, carryover from my years of as, of, as a ballerina. Um, my mother got me started with yoga at age 13 when I was going really hardcore into my ballet, um, into spending multiple hours a day dancing. And she introduced yoga to me so that I had a way to counter the consistent rotation that was happening in ballet. She, yoga is very um, uh, oriented towards uh, um, working in parallel, what we call in ballet, the sixth position. It's oriented towards working in parallel. And um, you develop the muscles that when you combine that with ballet, ballet is always turned out and yoga is typically um, not turned in, but uh, just working in alignment with your body's natural uh, tendencies rather than forcing a, an ideal like ballet does. And so what happened is that I was really protecting my body so that I could dance for a really long time with no injuries uh, because I was developing the uh, muscles in one way to support this, this 
consistent rotation that was happening and flexibility and strengthening that was happening in this other way. And one of the carryovers is that ballerinas are always cold, always cold. And when we're in priestess phase, when we're shedding this, uh, this uh, lining, when we're shedding this uh, energy and this matter that no longer serves, we too get very cold because there's a huge amount of energy concentrated right here. This is very similar to the effect that happens after we finish eating. Uh, if you are like five, 10 minutes after eating the main course, you'll find that you're a little cold. And that's because all of the body's uh, blood and energy is going to the center of the body to digest. And um, that that same uh, movement is happening here. And so all there, there's this whole great amount of activity happening um, in the body and an effect of that is really, really feeling cold. And so I'm wearing one of my warm ups <laughs> that I used to wear um, when I was a dancer uh, to add an extra layer of warmth because I did get some, I got some flack. I was uh, wearing socks in the um, video that I shot yesterday for day one and I got some flack. <laughs> uh, from someone who I just love so much. And they were like, that's, you know, um, you know, you can wear socks in yoga class, but this is, you know, we really want to um, be as, as intentional as possible. And, and it really is much safer to do yoga with your feet. And it also allows you to develop your feet um, in a pure way to have them, to not have socks on them. Um, so if your feet are cold and if you have low circulation, then before you do yoga, like I have low circulation in my hands right now, my feet are a little cold. So um, take some time for yourself to warm them up. And if you're doing yoga in person at a class, then always feel welcome to start with socks, but just know that you need to take them off because downward facing dog can get really slippery and you'll start to, um, you won't get the full benefits of the pose and you won't know where your limits are, uh, not your limits, but you won't know, you won't get the opportunity to really push into those uh, parts of the foot that are gonna help anchor the pose if you don't have a grip and your feet with no socks on them provides a natural grip. And if you wear socks that have grips on them, you cheat your uh, feet of the development of the strength that will give you the natural grip. Um, so like I said, uh, bring energy to your hands, you know, kind of circulate that blood in the hands and they'll get warmer. Same thing for the feet, wiggling the toes, uh, point and flex and a really fast way to warm up your feet is to actually get on your back and do the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Your feet will get so warm so fast. This energy, this like, woo, energy is not characteristic of, of what I just described as what you would probably be feeling in priestess in day two of your uh, menstrual cycle, but it's what's there. So it's very likely because of seeing this interview. Um, so uh, if you're like, what is going on? Why is she moving so fast? Um, that's why. Okay, now we're really going to begin. Let's start in seated where I am now and allow your eyes to float closed and allow your body to center. Um, you might reach down and kind of pull the flesh away from those sits bones so that you can feel them uh, either in contact or in closer contact with the ground. And you can feel that solidity in your body. This allows, the solidity allows your core, your shoulders, your head to sit on this seat, to let gravity do its repeated force on you, 
so that you can effortlessly sit in stillness. What a gift. What a gift. Let's bring our hands to prayer. And we're just gonna inhale. And as you inhale, I'd like you to send the breath to the first chakra. That is uh, pretty much just a little bit lower than your um, underwear line. Uh, well, <laughs> underwear line is subjective, right? It's relative. So um, just a little bit higher than where your seat uh, con is in contact with the ground. So sending the breath there. On the inhale, the lower back expands, that, that area in your crotch expands. Exhale, that area contracts. The breath makes its way out of the nose. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the hands to either side of your body. And we're just going to let the hands reach out to rise. So we're going to really root in our seat. And as we inhale, we're going to send energy through our fingertips Passively, we're not going to try to make our hands, our arms really straight because that's actually going to cut circulation. We want to continue flow. So we're going to send energy to our fingertips without locking our arms and feeling that stretch across our shoulder blades. If we had wings, they would be spread right now. Our back would be flat. And I just want you to bring your arms to shoulder level, your hands to shoulder level. And I want you to feel that flatness across your back. At the same time, feel that flatness. So feel like a, a, two panes of glass are pressing from the back of you and the front of you to create that flatness between them. So that then you can also feel that flatness in your front of your body your clavicle, your heart, feeling that, feeling that stretch and strengthening at the same time. Inhale here one more time. Exhale. Inhale, sending energy to those fingertips. Exhale, bringing the hands down to either side of your body. Inhale, reaching up and out, only bringing the hands to shoulder level or lower. Feeling that undisturbed stretch across your body. Exhale, bring the hands down to either side to the mat. One more inhale. And exhale. And now we're just going to increase that expansion in the back with a little bit of a challenge. So we're going to, you're welcome to keep your eyes closed for this entire time because it's going to be very gentle. And I am cueing you specifically so that you know where to put each body part. Um, so you don't really have to look, but if you want to, you can peek anytime or keep your eyes open the whole time. So you're going to, we're in seated. And what I'd like you to do is just simply bring the palms of your feet to touch. Um, some of people call this butterfly and, um, the farther away your feet are from your body, the more of a stretch you're going to feel on the outside of your thighs. The closer you bring your feet to your body, the um, more of a stretch you're going to feel on the inside of your thighs. So whatever, wherever you want to feel a stretch, um, you're welcome to feel it or whatever's easiest. You're gonna grab your 
feet, you're going to grab your ankles with your hands and you're going to use that to hold your body up uh, regardless of the length. So just find where you're comfortable or where you want to feel just a little challenge. This is yin yoga, which means that um, the breath is not going to be cued overall. Um, but uh, I do want a steady flow to the first and second chakras. Uh, that is a lovely goal to keep. Um, keeps you out of panic. Uh, and just start where you are relaxed because in yin, gravity is doing most of the work in contrast to yang where you're pushing against gravity and the resistance creates the energy, creates the warmth, creates the work. In this case, we're passively showing up and letting gravity uh, press our, let our, help our legs to relax towards the ground. And now what we're going to do is we're gonna reach, we're gonna sit, make sure that we're up on our seats and we're going to just reach, we're gonna root to rise. We're gonna reach through the sits bones and reach through our head to make our upper body totally erect, totally perpendicular to the ground. And that means our chin is not going to point up. It's going to stay parallel to the ground. And it may even point down a little bit to feel that stretch through the back of the neck. Our hands are anchored to our ankles, um, holding us, just supporting this erect spine. And we're going to reach up, 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 up. And then we're going to just reach over in a relaxed way. So you're going to let your body just relax over your legs, keeping wherever you put your legs, just keeping that place in butterfly. And just let your body reach down, down, down until you get to a place of 80% effort. So if you're feeling a lot of irritation, back off a little bit and go to where the irritation is pleasant and right before it becomes uncomfortable and that's going to be your 80 percent mark and you if you're far enough forward you can release the grip on your ankles and actually let your forearms rest on the ground or if you're even farther forward just let your arms splay to either side to accommodate even more flatness with the ground but wherever you are um, we're just going to breathe here for a while and let what needs to happen, happen. Let gravity do its thing. Let the head hang. You're welcome to shake. Yes. Shake the head. Yes. Shake the head. No. Whatever you want to do to really Get out your yayas before we come and settle here and let gravity do the work. Give it five more seconds. Flex and stretch the fingers, shake the head, whatever you want to do. And now let's just breathe. And as expansion happens with the result of this consistent force, gravity. Let your body melt deeper and deeper into the ground. There's a different kind of stretching that happens in yin. It's the result of release. One of the best yogis, best yoga teachers, and truly she is on the path, she is on the yogic, yogic path um, that I ever encountered. 
she um, is really strong with Ashtanga yoga, um, which I, I, I couldn't handle, but she teaches all, all of the different uh, types. And she's extremely flexible and extremely safe. She's not wrecking her body to be flexible like uh, other people who I see who do yoga who look more like contortionists than uh, yogis. There's just a solidity and a solidness to her poses, even when she goes and, and takes very, very poses that require a high amount of flexibility. When she describes how she can get there, she says, this, these poses are not, the flexibility is not a result of force and of working with a flexibility teacher or, you know, um, every day, you know, pushing your body a little bit farther. It's actually a willingness to let your muscles release and that the potential for flexibility is in all of us. Um, but most of us don't think we can have it because we have such a strong resistance. And that resistance shows up in the tightness of our muscles. And I am with the majority. where <laughs> I um, have flexibility, but I don't have extreme flexibility because I'm just not willing to release that yet. I'm not willing to let my body release to that level. But I breathe and I show up and I do different poses each day and have no idea which pose is helping, which later pose, which future pose. But I know that as long as I'm breathing, I'm releasing a little bit more and at the same time developing a little bit more strength to support the expansion. And it's that dual motion that we see so simply illustrated when we just watch the mechanics of an arm flexing. You see that one muscle pulls and the other one releases. One crunches and the other, the other side of that process of just flexing your arm. You see that one muscle crunches and the other side expands. It's always happening over and over again. That's our breath, inhale, exhale. When we inhale, our body expands. When we exhale, our body contracts. Okay, let's start to build our way back. If you're spread on the floor, then just bring your palms to the ground and really push with both hands to support your climb up. And then we'll just bring our hands to either side of our thighs, right above the knees. And we'll take our butterfly and we'll close its wings so that our feet end up with the palms flat on the ground. And now let's turn so that we are facing the short side of the mat. It doesn't matter which direction. And we're just gonna roll our body down little by little. Breathing through that roll down, holding on to your shins and your knees and then your thighs as you make your way to the ground. And now I'd just like you to bring both knees to your chest and you're gonna hug your body. Wrap your arms around your shins if that's available to you. And you should feel a little pinching in your hip flexors. Inhale and send expansive energy to these hip flexors that happen to be crunched right now. Send energy to that contracted space. And exhale. This is wind removing pose, well, part of it. And if you're ever feeling gassy, then this is a really good pose to take. 
and these next two that we're going to take, well, it's one pose either side, are going to also help accommodate that if you're ever feeling gassy. And if you ever need a release, this is a wonderful way to release. So now let's start with the left side. So we're going to keep that wrap. We have our left leg being hugged by our left arm. We're going to keep that relationship. And we're just going to let the right arm just float down and beside the shoulder so that it just kind of rolls out. And keep that hand shoulder level or below. And I really want you to think about keeping that right shoulder blade on the ground. And I'd like you to stretch that right leg along the mat, stretch that right foot down, 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 away from the center of the body. And we're gonna try to, we're gonna keep some energy in that right leg, but not too much. Just let it relax. Feel what that feels like. This is not a yang. So we're just feeling these different moments of expansion. Notice I didn't say, and now you're going to push, you're going to pull that left knee towards the left shoulder tip and la la la. No, just feel this, feel what this feels like. Feel this subtle expansion, feel this expansion along the diagonal between your right hip bone and your left shoulder tip. Breathe into that axis. Feeling that expansion and exhale, relaxing into the expanded space you just created by doing nothing, by breathing. I promised I wouldn't cue the breath, so I won't do it again. But I would like you to bring some awareness there. amazing how much you get to feel in doing very very gentle exercises we're so used to like needing to be pushed to an extreme to think we can create progress that gentleness you you know you if you keep things intact without ripping them. And when we overstretch, we're actually ripping our muscles and creating scar tissue, which sometimes our muscles can't heal. And then they just end up like, just stretched forever, unable to support us in our twilight years. And that's how you see, especially ballet dancers. I mean, I can only call out that frame of reference, but when you see ballet dancers who have danced their whole lives, you'll see they're bent over and it's because they overstretch their muscles so their body can't they didn't have the muscles when the muscles were diminishing they didn't have enough muscle mass to keep their body up as well as just scoliosis and whatnot what which happens right if we don't support our spine and maybe even if we do Okay, bring this right knee back and let the right arm wrap around the right knee. And we're gonna take the same stretch we had on the right side on the left. Just this subtle stretch along this diagonal, feeling the left hip bone, from that left hip bone to that right shoulder tip. Breathing into that axis. Acknowledging the subtle expansion that happens when we breathe. The space it creates. And cuddling into that space with our exhale. It's like a lovely hug. When we hug, we first expand and open up to each other. And then we cuddle into each other in the contraction. Thinking of the hugs our body gives life every time we breathe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Amore Sati, love it all. Okay. Bring this knee back to meet, bring the left knee back to meet the right knee. And now I just like you, this is a very interesting stretch um, because I wanna keep it yang, but I need to find the adjustment for flexibility levels. So roll with me on this, okay. So you're gonna bring the hands, you're gonna let the shoulder, you're gonna open the hands so that they point towards the sky coming from that wrapped position, right? And I just want you to find the place in your arms, let the shoulder tips rest into the ground and find the place where your body feels fully supported by the ground, like your shoulder blades are fully flat against the ground and your hands, you move your hands forward towards your head and then towards your feet until you find this place of weightlessness. It's a place of non-resistance where the arms just kind of hang in the air without effort, with a minimal amount of effort, okay? And after you've found that with your hands, I'd like you to find it with your legs. So you're gonna stretch your feet up to the sky and it doesn't matter if they're flexed or pointed. Um, if, you're, if your eyes are open and you're watching me, it looks like I'm shaking. I'm actually shivering. I'm like very cold. I'm like very cold. Um, so find your legs, move your legs forward and back until you find that place where they're just hanging weightless in balance with gravity. There's this lovely place that has a balance with gravity. And if you don't have the flexibility to let your legs um, be perpendicular to the ground, totally fine. Just take a bolster and lay your legs on the bolster. Pillows, like three pillows, and lay your, put the pillows as close to your bum, to your hamstrings as possible, and let them kind of lay against it so that you can um, get as close to this pose as possible. Why? Because this is a reset for the spine. This is a really wonderful way to help the spine find its balance because those four points of contact that are happening with your shoulder blades and your hip bones provide this, these points of this base and these points of contact let your spine stop doing any work so that it can just relax fully and sort of reorganize itself. They're taking on the weight of, they have this weight pushing down in these four spots so that it really anchors and just like a, that's a good example. Yeah, if you hold a string taut at both ends, it becomes straight, right? You take a string and it's like flimsy, you know, take either end of a string and it's length if your hands are together. But if you pull your hands apart to the length of the string and hold it taut, I mean, and hold those ends, you know, taut, then it's the string is straight. Same thing, except the ends of the string are these four points. They're letting the spine feel its tautness, feel its natural straight. If you're dealing with scoliosis, which I deal with, um, a, an osteopath, he told me to take a towel and lay, you know, roll the towel so that it's vertically has some thickness and then lay my spine along the towel to help train my spine to uh, keep from enforcing that curving. And so I do it every day for 20 minutes with my legs up the wall. 
Okay, let's bring everything down back to this little upside down child's pose that we're in, this wind removing pose. And we're just going to rock back up to seated. So you're going to do uh, what we would do to get into boat pose. If you're keeping your eyes closed, you're welcome to just, uh, and I'll guide you through it. So just un allow your arms to loosen up and to land on either side of your body. And then you're just going to lift your feet towards the back of the mat and then put your hands on your on that area right above the eyes of the knee and then you're just going to rock your body so use your legs to motivate a rocking sensation you're just going to rock one two three and rock up and use the the hands that you had on your um right above the eyes of your knees to hold you as you rock up and now we're just gonna face back to the long side of our mat. We're gonna be in seated pose and we're gonna bring our hands to prayer. And we're gonna thank ourselves for this extremely gentle moment, this new way of exploring the body through breath, through subtlety, realizing that giving our ourself time to honor the subtle moments makes it a lot easier for us to handle the dynamic moments. Because just like an inhale and an exhale, it allows us to find expansion and space in the little things. And that awareness, we expand with our discovery in the subtle moment. And then we cuddle into the space that we've created. Really makes everything a little easier. It makes gratitude a little more accessible. And underneath gratitude is grace. Wishing you joy, ease, space, and grace. Thank you for joining me today.